Welcome to Calvary Conversations. My name is Mariah, and I'm here with my big brother and some other people that we will introduce in a bit. <laughs> my big brother, Pastor Morgan. Here I am. <laughs> there he is. And we are now going to introduce our special guests. So here they are, Ryan and Andrea. Woo! Woo! Thank you guys Howdy. for joining us. Thanks. We are happy to have you in our Calvary Conversation studio oh, mm-hmm. that Drea happy just found out about. <laughs> that it was <laughs> this room? <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, but so what would you guys say of how to be, because the world tells you, oh, just be satisfied mm-hmm. and then you'll be good. But what does that look like for you, like, on a daily basis, I guess? I want to hear Ryan's thoughts. Being satisfied in the world or being satisfied in God? In the Lord. In the Lord. Lord. <laughs> yeah. Well, the world is always going to f- leave you feeling empty, and Satan's always going to keep accusing you and make you feel like a terrible person, which, oh. w- which we are, yeah. set apart mm-hmm. from Christ. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think on a daily basis, for the Lord, I like what somebody said the other day day about giving it's it's the same thing about you know you're not your own you've been brought bought with a price yep. mm. that's talking about glory, glorifying god in your body but like somebody said the other day who went through covid and then but anyways he got close with the lord he mm. said like my very breath mm. is sustained in the lord mm. mm-hmm. so like he's like everything He's like, I wish more people said this <laughs> because he's like, he's learning it. But when somebody asks him a question or to do something, he's like, uh, he feels like he should say, I got to check with my dad. <laughs> <you know? laughs> so just like yeah. that kind of walk where it's, uh, you know, and we're human, so we fail, but walking by the spirit and complete surrender mm-hmm. is saying, I've tried to live my life mm. with, you know, my own self will and my pride and my sin and it uh it only ends in death and and what's not optimal so just Mm -hmm. giving the lord the first fruits of your day Mm -hmm. sitting down setting in time aside specific time for him and just being still and listening Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. amen good good. i really love that he said my life is not my own like Mm -hmm. that's that's Mm -hmm. a that's such a powerful like statement i was reading you guys had brought up a, a devotional i forget the guy's name Oswald Chambers. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Um, I was reading, I think it was like the 3rd of October. And um, it said, it was talking about pouring out, like pouring, pouring out, pouring everything out to the Lord. Right. And it was, mm. it brought up the example of when David was saying, when David, um, I think his army was like um, bringing him water because um, he needed, hmm. he needed water. And David, um, David, it's in second Samuel, I think, but David poured it out. He's like, I'm not going to drink this. I'm going to mm. pour it out to the Lord, even though he needed mm-hmm. it. He's like, I'm not going to drink. It. I'm yeah. giving it to the Lord. You know? mm. And I was thinking it's like crazy. our life is not our own. Right. And so at being single, like, because God put the desire in our hearts to be with someone, you know, like he put mm-hmm. that desire in our hearts, but holding on, even like we can even idolize a desire, you yeah. know, we can even like mm-hmm. put our whole lives in that. But even the desire is not our own because he put it in our hearts. You know what I mean? Yeah. So are we willing to pour that out to the Lord, pour out what we want yeah. the most out to the Lord? And Oswald had said something like you can't set aside something for the Lord that's meant that that you basically picture to satisfy yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, everything all, like ours, like everything in us should be toward satisfying God, you know, and I think that's like toward pleasing him. And I think that's the hardest thing because we're humans. And I'm going to tell you that's a struggle. Yeah. But I think like um, the one thing that, that God's really been working on me the most like recently is to come to a place where I feel I can say, you know what, I may never get married or even I'll say to myself, mm-hmm. I'll never get married just to see how I feel, you know, mm-hmm. and if I and mm-hmm. if I feel like attached, then I'm like, dang, my hands like this and not like this. I should mm-hmm. I should open that's up my hand. Good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's. Am that's, I willing? Are we willing to pour Tim it out? Brown said, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. He, Wait, I'm, waiting. I'm, yes. Well, it's not. Yeah. His, yes. It's not yes. his. Yes. But like, waiting with an open hand, yeah. like yeah. God, what do you want? Yeah. And that is hard to say. Yeah. Like, God, do you want me to be single? Even mm-hmm. I know that's yeah. not an easy thing, and it's not a calling for a lot of people. I don't believe, and, but but we have to be open with yeah. that mm-hmm. and. I think when we lay that down, so sometimes people are like, oh, I'll, yeah, I'll lay it down, and then God will give me a, a ah, spouse. Yeah. 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 yeah, we think we can <laughs> we can mess you? with God. What? Like, we we think we can be <laughs> like, everything. okay, I can do reverse right. psychology on like, God. It's like, it, but no. It's easy. <laughs> but we really do have to have that heart to say, yeah. God, 
I, like why well, I tell people like and tell kids in youth groups they're like oh I want to date I want to get married so bad but then it's like in heaven we, we're not even gonna yeah, be yeah, married you know mm. we're gonna be married to Jesus right uh-huh. we're the bride of Christ and so I think to to picture that and to say my life isn't supposed to just be for my spouse right. or to be looking for a spouse. I need to be serving God mm-hmm. now right. where I am and, yeah. and whatever situation I'm in. Because, like, I've only been married for a little over two years. But if Vel, you know, went home to be with Jesus, mm-hmm. like I, I, my life still has to and go I'm on. Right. I still have to continue to give my life to the mm-hmm. Lord. I can't be like, oh, my life's well, over. Is, yeah. You know, it needs to... So before marriage and even after marriage, like I just did a memorial service today of a lady who lost her husband. But it's like her life, she needs to keep going on. Yeah. You know, she needs to keep serving Jesus. She can't just say, well, my spiritual leader's gone. No, it's like <laughs> God's your all in all. Yeah. And a spouse is just a cherry on top. So. Amen. And yeah. a way to mm. find if you are like wanting a godly spouse is to be serving. Like, yeah. Yeah. And to... Like, why would you want to be going to a bar or going on a dating app when it's like <laughs> you're just trying to find someone who's probably most likely lazy and a bum? But <laughs> if you're serving God with all your heart, the visual that everyone knows, and if you don't know, I'm telling you now, but is you like a race, you're running as hard as you can to the finish line, which is what? <laughs> Jesus mm-hmm. yep. in heaven eternity. one day with him, eternity. So you're running full force, all out. And then if, with what you're doing and serving the Lord, you look to the side of you and that person is also doing that. And you're like, Hey, they're, hey, keeping, up. <laughs> they're right. keeping up or we could do this forever. And then you say, Hey, you want to, you want to surf together? Okay. And that's the courting right. stage, which everyone says you shouldn't ever want to date. Dating is the interview time. But you know what? I don't really agree with that. in the fact of if you're doing it the right way, they, if you're doing it the right way of like in fellowship with other believers yeah. and like with your family, church family, it should be like what we're saying. You get to know them when you're serving, yeah. when you're when you're being able to do things in a group. Not saying you can, can never like have a time where, I mean, obviously you have to talk alone and be, right. but not put yourself in situations. We talked in Some other podcasts. Can to, yeah. yeah, something can happen or arousing love. But yeah, we got to get back but, to that where we have family and yeah, we have the church family yeah. where they mm-hmm. gain to know each other in, in a group, you know? Yeah. And, and people are like, oh, that's not cool. I just want to be... Yeah, I just want just me and her, you it's know. Not, but that's not very romantic. It's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's it's, what people say. Yeah, that's what people like say. Ryan, and <laughs> but I mean, that's what that's how Vel and I did it. Yeah. We just we had yeah. the family, the church family. Mm-hmm. We are never alone with each other. Like we are alone with each other. Like maybe at like a restaurant or something. But like people, could, like our family, could see us still. You know. Yeah. So it's like, and that sounds crazy for people. Uh, but we courted for a year, you know, and then we got married right. and everything by the grace of God has been good. You know, right. people are thinking, oh, but you have to do this. You got to try this or that. Nope. I mean, no. we, by the we, grace of God, it worked for us. And yeah, we've lost like the idea of what romance is supposed to be like. Like, it's not romantic, but hmm. that's not supposed to be in it. Like in where you like. We introduce romance so soon, yeah. like nowadays, like yeah. in, in well, relationships. Now we get to enjoy and, that in marriage. Exactly. Yeah. Otherwise, it's like, mm. well. Otherwise, it's your brother and sister. That's how you have to look at it. The podcast we're listening to yeah. with Becoming Something, and this one lady, she's 40, and she's not married. And they were talking in the podcast. They're like, until you're engaged, or really it's until you say, do technically, because Val was engaged before mm-hmm. she was with Morgan. They're your brother and sister, yeah, you're like and somebody. that's how you have to look at them yeah. because they but could think not about be how weird that day, is. If, like, yeah, if you're going to church, you both love the church and the church family that you've grown up in, and you date, but yes, say you mess saying. around, you know, you sleep with you one know, another or something, after it's over. and then well, you break up, and then you're like, leave. oh, I gotta leave the, ch-, you know, and, and it's not supposed to be like that. Right. We're not supposed to right. mess around that mm-hmm. way. And because we don't know if it's actually going to lead to marriage, right. you know? The moment you the moment you know that like you start feeling it's gonna be awkward once if you like you stop talking, then you know you probably crossed yep. the line. Yep. You know? Yeah. You and should be you able to, to yeah, break up and then be cool. And then next Sunday sit side by side right. as friends. You know? <laughs> it's like, Amen. Yeah. So And I think it's also really good what just talking about relationships and then we'll end it. But even when we look at our culture and the hookup realm and doing things like the 
I don't know, just how we do things is so not the way that right. God intended it, right? There's mm-hmm. not even dating in the no. Bible. But if people really do have a desire to be married, I like how um, Pastor Jonathan Palacuda was saying too. He's like, tell people. Like, tell your friends and family, like, you know what? I really have a desire to get married. And if they see someone else or have ideas, like, it <laughs> used Matchmaker. to be the families. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And actually, I was joking. I don't know if I was joking with Ryan or someone. I was like, would you trust me? And I know people are like, <laughs> no. But I'm like, you don't have to trust me. I'm joking. But that we have a church family where yeah. we're like, hey, we love you. We're for you. And if... And not just because, ooh, we love love, but we love it where it's true. Like, God loves marriage. And it is, like, two are better than one, like, in the fact of you can also, in marriage, you can also, when you have children, raise up little warriors Mm -hmm. for Christ to disciple them. Mm -hmm. But the key is, too, is to not just be finding people who's just, like, a random person that you're attracted to, but someone that your goals in life is, like, ministry. Not that they're the exact same thing. But that but they complement each, each other, yeah. other in line. Like if you have mm-hmm. one person who is like at church serving all the time, another person who's like, I don't a even want to go to church. Yeah, so. Like that's not right. Or though he was saying one person is like, I want to be an accountant in Michigan. And the other person is like, well, I want to be a, a, a missionary in Peru. That might not work, work, you know? Yeah. Not that they're not two godly people. But Someone's going to have to lay down. Someone's going to yeah. have to switch their... Yeah. <laughs> which, yeah, but I, I think that... I'm going to read these two verses, and then we can try to kind of wrap it up. But Romans 12, 2 says, Do not be conformed... Um, sorry, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by the testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Hmm. So... Right. We're not going to try to fit in what the world's doing and how they do things to try to be trendy. Right. But what is it? It's the word of God. It's God's will that changes us, that right. transforms us. And it's because we're trying to do things that are good and acceptable. Right. Not to like a future spouse or someone we're trying to attract, but to God, to him, right? to please him. And then this last one, because I know we're in the book of Daniel and yes. I love this mm. song, Another in the Fire, but it's Daniel 318. But even if he doesn't, right, yeah, save the mouth of fire, good. we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, we're talking to Nebi, King that Nebi. we will never <laughs> serve your gods or worship the gold statue you have set up. So yeah. that's how we need mm-hmm. to say is like, even mm-hmm. if you don't give me what I want, God, You're or even awesome. if you yeah. don't like give well, we're me this We're unworthy servants. We yeah. don't even well, <laughs> deserve it. Be asking? be asking for anything anyway. Yeah. But yeah. even if you don't get even the position you want at church, maybe you're serving at a church where you are and you're like, I want to do this. I'm telling you, the people who are serving behind the scenes that no one sees, like me and Morgan are on stage and doing the podcast all the time, we'll probably get less rewards than someone who is just cleaning the bathroom between services you know what i mean yeah and that's how we need to look at it is those who are least here it says will be greatest in yeah. heaven and that's, that's the it's best. just crazy that's the best. but yeah. it's so cool how god's ways are not our ways like yeah. the bible says mm-hmm. and Praise god, i don't right. know i'm just so thankful for our church family and just mm-hmm. being able to have this community right yeah. what it was in an ax they fellowshiped they read the word together and Bro- that fellowship we're good Bro- at that yeah. we're good we do at break bread every day all day yeah. <laughs> that's what we do but <laughs> i encourage you guys wherever you are if you're like in a community of people like that you can be in a community but you just don't want it because maybe you're shy or whatever to go into a community of like a church because that's so important you we need each other and if you don't have one and you're looking for a church and you want to visit us you guys can do that more than welcome to do that mm-hmm. here Where at calvary we? valley oh, there you go calvary valley church 1691 north lock and so cool. drive <laughs> 85704 but we, we would love to have you part of our family. But do you have any closing thoughts? I'm thankful, thoughts? too, for Amen. you guys. Any closing thoughts or anything you would like to share with the listeners? Or your church family, because that's who everyone should be yeah. listening. You got thoughts, Brian? Yeah, I was just going to say, I, would, I wanted to, like, exhort and encourage and, and uh, mm-hmm. people with what the Lord has been encouraging and exhorting and challenging me with mm-hmm. and also through other people in the church which is um, just to hmm. I think similar to there's a false dichotomy I think in our culture it goes along with like oh don't talk about at the dinner table don't talk about God and politics Mm. and 
I think this our American culture or Western civilization is kind of separated, you know, God and science. Mm. When in reality, like mm-hmm. science worships God just like everything mm-hmm. else. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. But uh, also with with politics, like or just the political sphere, um, there's a couple of things that come up for, that he's been coming up for me, which is. Um, that we're called as Christians to stand in the gap yeah. for mm-hmm. those who can't defend themselves mm-hmm. for the cause of the uh, widows and the fatherless. Mm-hmm. Um, a city on a hill. Uh, we're not to be a lamp that's put under a lampstand, mm-hmm. but on the stand, mm-hmm. salt of the earth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so all of these things, wherever the Spirit's leading you, whether it's at a you know private family dinner mm-hmm. yeah. with people who don't believe, uh, or going to the school board, mm-hmm. um, like some people at church have been doing. Mm-hmm. It's been really encouraging. I just encourage you to to uh, draw near to the Lord and rely on Him for the mm-hmm. strength to do that because it uh, terrifies me as well. But <laughs> I think as things get crazier, whether or not the Lord's returning in this season or not, mm-hmm. uh, the world's going to keep getting darker, yeah. which may be scary, but... We don't have to be scared as Christians. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but also uh, I think the harvest is, uh, the Lord of the harvest is looking at the harvest and it's plentiful and light shines the brightest in in a dark world. So Mm. um, just be the salt and light. And uh, yeah, that's good. Mm. And when you talked about the harvest, I was thinking how, the harvest is great, yep. but the yeah. workers right. are few. Yeah. Mm. And we see that even at so, church, you know, yeah. with volunteers. It's like we we have young adults mm-hmm. and stuff, but then we still, as the church grows, it's like we still need more more, more yeah. people yeah. to, yeah, to too. harvest, yeah. you know, yeah. and to disciple and yes. to love and to serve. Mm. And I think, yeah, we need to really come to church saying not what can I take from this church Mm. like Pastor Craig taught uh, with the 10-2 ministry Luke 10-2 but what and Matthew 937 and Matthew 937 yeah but what we can give give, you know it's it's not for us it's not Mm. just for to have a cool place to hang out it's for God too so even though yeah. lunch is not free. We pay for our own lunch. So. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Harvest Festival, bring, that's true. bring a right. side dish. <laughs> yeah, bring yeah. a side dish. Okay. What about you and Jay? Any closing thoughts? Um, yeah, mine's more toward the unbel- the, the, like the non-believer, though. Like, I think hmm. um, it's so easy to, well, two things. It's so easy to get wrapped up in, like, the world and wrapped mm-hmm. up in, like, um, your desires and, like, all the things that are, that are out here. But I think we all can, like, attest to this. I mean, well, if you weren't. You, I mean, you guys were raised in the church, and I was too, kind of, but I, I did kind of stray off, and I think I've, I know a little bit about yours, your testimony too, but I think we can often get so wrapped up in all that, but we come to notice that that joy is like, that that joy, that happiness is fleeting, you know? Mm-hmm. It, like, it, mm-hmm. it lasts for like a second, and then you still feel empty and kind of feel lost, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so I just want to encourage like those who may be listening who don't know the Lord, maybe who don't, yeah. they, they maybe they attest to like, they, I mean, they ascribe to like, new age or something else that that seems to give you experience like like if you Mm -hmm. want you're looking for experiences and stuff um or whatever that looks like i think the first thing is maybe like sit and think for a second and 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 feel how and notice how your happiness doesn't last you know and 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 i want to encourage you to 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 look at jesus like to to Mm -hmm. turn away from that and 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 chase after jesus because he's the one thing like literally the one thing that never changes and that never goes away like when you accept christ like your joy will never go away Mm -hmm. and the second Mm -hmm. thing i was going to say is um for for those who don't um those who may look at church and look at people who know a lot of scripture or look at like no maybe you have a lot of questions and you're intimidated by like being around people who you feel know more than you when it comes to god like you know um, mm. And that may be keeping you from going to church. I want to encourage you also to like put aside those thoughts because mm. that's like mm. the enemy trying to keep you from coming. He's trying yeah. to keep you from coming in. He's trying to hold you down and keep you out, you know? So I want to encourage you if you're thinking like you're intimidated, you're thinking that if you come, you'll be this person like this big and everyone else is like this, you know, drop that and, and, and come like whether yeah. that's here yeah. or whether, whatever, wherever that is, if, if when it's teaching about Jesus, like wherever that is, go and you'll notice like god doesn't look at 
our like our our stature in our mind like like he doesn't look at our, our education he doesn't look at any of that and often he the bible actually says he uses like what the small and insignificant mm-hmm. things yeah for you know great things so mm-hmm. drop those thoughts and and, and come mm-hmm. if that's what's keeping you back so mm-hmm. Amen. 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 Good wow mm-hmm. that was good i'll yeah. preach even though we don't believe in one pastors yeah <laughs> Sorry, Jared. Right. <laughs> this is your only smile right. you get. This is the one time. <laughs> Me too. No, but yeah, I'm thankful for you guys. Yeah, I said it nice. so many times, but it's so true. Mm. And knowing that God will reward you in heaven. Yeah. yeah. Because we're not paying you for this podcast. Sorry. Nope. Just kidding. Wasted my nonsense. Get you water bottle. <laughs> <Just kidding. Yeah. laughs> Thanks so much for joining us on Calvary Conversations. If you haven't already, please make sure to like subscribe and share this video if you would like to just listen to us wherever you get your podcast just type in calvary conversations you can also follow us on instagram at calvary conversations thanks so much to our sponsors mission heating and cooling please make sure to check out their website in the description below you can also support calvary conversations by clicking on the support button in the description below thanks so much guys and we'll see you next week